Yeah, he's going there. Just been servicing my Canadian Pacific there. Just got a rank of uh, the blue trying in. Um, well, I suppose you call them cages. Um, yeah, I'm just service this. It's swimming beautifully. Melody. It's one of my favourites, I suppose you'd say. And I've got a little old J72 run through there on the inside line. I painted that because the shell was no good when I got it. It had been pretty well beaten. Whoever had played with it before me had definitely got his money's worth. So I just decided to change the colour. Put the colours of Queensland on there. Put the, green, the maroon and the, the gold there. Or the yellow, I suppose. This is the one I really uh, favour, I suppose you'd say. Just getting them both coming through there, that's not a bad shot. I've been cleaning these blue coaches up, they were pitiful when I first got them. Dirty, neglected things. But they've responded well. And I've also cleaned the shell of this. We've got an interesting history of uh, this light. Okay? This was based off a Canadian. I forget was it a G2 or a G3, I forget exactly which light. And that the, uh, the fellow at Trying was taking inspiration from. But. Uh, they built this in uh, HO, SCAR, and um, they had to stretch it a bit, the length, to uh, make it fit the uh, Princess chassis there. And that's just a yeah, standard Princess chassis. Actually came out looking pretty good. It makes you wonder what its size it would have been if they'd actually built it in uh, double A, the four mil. How big it would have really been. But anyway, just trudging along beautifully there. It shows the middle one. And the, um, there are quite a few versions of these, especially if you live in Canada. They had the numbers in gold on them in some of the uh, issues. They had the Hiawatha sign on the, on the front of the boiler there. Uh, I think that was around 71 that came out. They just, people in trying decided it needed a name, so they came up with the name Hiawatha. I, I do have a Hiawatha. It, it's, it's boxed in a way at the moment. Should have got it out to show you, but I'm sure he's a good thing. And these, uh, these blue carriages, I think they were early 60s. Mainly designed for the Australian market to go with the, uh, the double-ended diesel. The Victorian diesel that they were modelled off. I have one of those somewhere too. I think it needs a bit of repair. Yeah. I really uh I really quite like these um these trying this era of trying model that was uh was imaginative. Get them coming around again. Here he comes. I've just got him on a gentle pace at the moment, just so that you can see it in action. And here she comes. Uh -oh. 
just pull them up now. Give you a looky. How's that for a crawl? It's not bad. Not bad. I'll let old mate come right up. Here he comes. He goes well too. Beautiful. A really good mate in that one. Okay, and uh, there are a couple of, these are all Jewess um, wagons. I've obviously painted them and made, I made the load for that. They're just desiccant tablets that you find in medication. Um, bottles to keep your medication from um, getting full of humidity. Uh, that's the perfect weight for that carriage because it likes to likes to uh, derail a bit. Bloody annoying. And that one, the tarped one. That's just a bit of elf oil. I crinkled up and painted and tried to make it look as real as I could. The string doesn't look very convincing as a rope. I'll have to find something else. I thought that would work, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I painted it a bit dark or varied the colour through it a bit, it might be more convincing. And here we have the last wagon, and it's full of um, oh, well, you know, that's I forget the name of it now. Um, Anthracite, I think they call it. I just crushed it up and tried to make it look like a coal load to scale. And here we have TR2335. This one's got a very nice body on it, like it's got no nicks or anything like that, no damage. It's actually pretty pristine. And, um, so is the tender. I've got about half a dozen of these tenders only in various states of repair that I've acquired over the years. Just when you when you buy lots and of various things, this inevitably one of them shows up. And anyway, here we go. We go down through this one. This is the baggage car. All four doors. In very nice condition. Then we got the diner. The, the yellow markings on all of the pinstripings obviously suffered a little bit, but still pretty good condition. It runs very well. The wheels are in good order. The roof is pretty clean. And there we have a. That's foam inside there. I've um, had to put some. Some, uh, something in there to keep it um, stable. It rattles like a. Uh, it just rattles unbelievably if you don't have something in there. So I'll, I can easily pull that back out and put something in later, but that's, what, that's just a temporary thing. And we've got the, uh, the observation kind of coach at the uh, end here, bringing up the rear. There's a bit of discoloration in that. Uh, in that one, it um, looks like it was maybe left in the sun or something. It's just got a peculiar colour, a yellowy brown kind of thing. I've soaked it a few times trying to get it off, and uh, all that roof too. So, someone took the paintbrush to that. I'll have to convert that back to a grey, but I think I've got another roof from another carriage somewhere. I might be able to just do a swap if I can get it off, I'm not sure. I'm hoping. These, these roofs don't come off very easily, that's why I haven't been able to put anything in this one. It's, uh, she's on tight. I don't want to uh, damage it, so I might just have to suffer the noise. So anyway, there we go. what I've been doing.
Spring and all trains. I'll catch up with you again soon.